What are some NSFW history facts that do not get taught in schools? The actual death of Ratcliffe, you know, the oddly proportioned villain from Pocahontas? From the Encyclopedia Virginia. The colonists, led by Captain John Ratcliffe, walked into an ambush. About 33 men, or two-thirds of their number, were killed. The Indians captured Ratcliffe, and their women skinned him alive using mussel shells. Every year, it was the pharaoh's solemn duty to go to the banks of the Nile, disrobe, and masturbate. A great many other men would follow him, and when the pharaoh was done, they too would bash one out on the banks. Further, it was believed that the pharaoh had to be sure that as great an amount of his gentleman's relish as possible landed in the river itself rather than on the land in order to guarantee a good future harvest. Peter the Great scoured the Russian Empire in search of dwarfs and giants in an effort to breed a race of each, while he couldn't find enough giants he found many dwarfs. He would bake a huge pie and have a dwarf get naked and wait inside it to jump out and scare guests. In addition to using them as regular stewards and servants and such. That was the tip of Peter's crazy. Royal family members had people witness them having sex, so they could confirm the legitimacy of the heir. Back in the day, pre-revolutionary times or so, one of the only things that women in the English colonies were allowed to have expertise on was the female body reproductive system. Occasionally, a case would come up in court that required the inspection of a woman's body. Usually it would be to determine if she had been raped or otherwise had sex out of wedlock. To handle these sorts of cases, the court would convene a jury of women from a nearby town to perform the inspection and report their findings. In one particular case though, a married woman was petitioning for the annulment of her marriage on the basis that her husband was impotent. To test these claims, the court convened a jury of women tasked solely with attempting to bring the woman's husband to erection. The article didn't mention the result of this case, but this remains one of very few cases that a jury of women was convened in a court of law for any purpose besides their expertise in women's bodies. I for one, like to think he was playing the long con the whole time. John F. Kennedy was dating Miss Denmark in the 1940s, and when they stayed at Sumter House in Charleston the FBI bugged their room because they thought she may be a Nazi spy. Turns out they didn't hear a lot of conversation, but instead a lot of NSFW time. Tapes are in the Library of Congress for those interested. The Mayans weren't very good at making alcohol, it tasted bad so they would give themselves enemas of it so they wouldn't have to drink it. They also used mixtures of psychoactive plants. John Harvey Kellogg one of the Kellogg brothers, who invented breakfast cereal, advocated for sewing silver wire through boys' foreskin to prevent them from masturbating. Strange fellow. He also was super into shitting, like, he invented cereal and other foods, so it would give a workout to your colon, and he made a chair that supposedly shook and made you shit yourself. And, he had a sanitarium that famous people such as President Taft went to, and the residents there got three enemas a day. It was a sort of cult almost. When Marie Antoinette was imprisoned by the French citizens, they took her kids. Then they had her oldest son raped by prostitutes, so that he would contract their STDs. They then tried to use this as grounds to try her for abusing her children. The accusations went nowhere. So the poor kid was given a ton of venereal diseases for nothing. Spelled Marie Antoinette's name wrong. Holy fuck, so many upvotes. Also to those who are asking my source, I read it on Wikipedia. I went back to try and get a more detailed source. Wikipedia's source was. In 1928 the United Fruit Company, fruit company from Louisiana, had banana plantation in Columbia, and the workers organized a strike against them. They demanded written contracts, eight-hour workdays, six-day work weeks, and the elimination of food coupons. The strike was one of the biggest strikes in Colombian history, and many communistic and liberal parties participated. U.S. officials in Colombia, along with United Fruit representatives, portrayed the workers' strike as communist with subversive tendency. 
In telegrams to the U.S. Secretary of the Government, the United States of America threatened to invade with the U.S. Marine Corps if the Colombian government did not act to protect United Fruit's interests. An unknown number of workers died after the conservative government of Miguel Mendez sent the Colombian army to end the union. An army regiment from Bogota was dispatched by the government to deal with the strikers, which it deemed to be subversive. Whether these troops were sent in at the behest of the United Fruit Company did not clearly emerge. The troops set up their machine guns on the roofs of the low buildings at the corners of the main square, closed off the access streets, and after a five-minute warning opened fire into a dense Sunday crowd of workers and their wives and children who had gathered, after Sunday Mass, to wait for an anticipated address from the governor. General Cortez Vargas, who commanded the troops during the massacre, took responsibility for 47 casualties. In reality, the exact number of casualties has never been confirmed. Herrera Soto, co-author of a comprehensive and detailed study of the 1928 strike, has put together various estimates given by contemporaries and historians, ranging from 47 to as high as 2,000. Survivors, popular oral histories and written documents give figures 800-3000 killed, adding that the killers threw them into the sea. The dresses and corsets worn by women in the court of King Louis XIV were so cumbersome and difficult to get out of that women would often take a dump in the hallways of the Versailles Palace during grand balls. The morning after the corners of hallway in the palace would have piles of shit stacked up that the servants would have to clean up. Thomas Granger was the first juvenile to be executed in what would become the USA. He was convicted of boogery with a mare, a cow, two goats, several sheep, two calves, and a turkey and hung in September, 1642. Thank you everyone for educating me about the difference between hung and hanged. I'll never get the image of horse dick out of my head now. The second, gilded for talking about animal boogery. What a world we live in. Is this not a commonly used word in the US? In the UK I feel like a lot of people know what this means though here bugger is a common expression of dismay akin to shouting shit when you drop something etc. On a completely unrelated note about boogery, I once had a Japanese girlfriend who came round for dinner with my family. My mom asked is Japan a safe country to live in, to which my ex replied yeah it's pretty safe, except for boogery, she had meant to say burglary. My parents were struggling to keep a straight face, and then everyone lost it when my mum turns around and says oh, it's still illegal there is it? The first use of legalized prostitution in the United States was in Nashville, Tennessee, after it was occupied by the Union Army. Rates of STDs dramatically decreased after the new regulations were implemented. Pancho Villa and his buddies would go through cities, and they would kidnap the cute ladies, and they would never be seen again. In preparation for this the ladies would go to the mud and appear to be very filthy, so they wouldn't be taken away. They took my grandmother's aunt, 